podcast, an incredible platform to get good news, great stories, inspiration out to a lot of people. On this episode of AG Today, you're gonna be introduced to a brand new podcast. AG News is the official news service of the Assemblies of God featuring stories from here in the United States and around the world of what God is doing through people who are advancing the kingdom of God. And I'm pleased today to introduce the latest edition of the news service, a podcast with our podcast host, Ethan and Sarah Forheitz. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, Thank you, Doug. Great us. to be with you. This is a great adventure, and I know it's going to reach a lot of people. You're not new to the broadcast industry, but the podcast, how's it going so far? It's incredible. Yeah. Honestly, we have uh, shot several episodes now, and there's not been a single one that did not both challenge me mm. and increase my faith is to believe right? God for bigger things. Yeah, yeah, it's incredibly inspiring, and, it, and it's really, I think for us, and we walk away every time saying, wow, I didn't know all that was happening. We, we're very enlightened by what's happening in the world, uh, what the Lord is doing in different areas of the world, this country and around the world. Yeah. So we, we leave there kind of pumped up about what's going on. Uh, and I think uh, our listeners and viewers will be excited about it as well. You know, it's a privilege to travel on the weekends, and I'm constantly reminded that the church is really the primary instrument that God is using to expand his kingdom. I suspect, like me, you've discovered just the power of the local church and some really heroes of the faith that are in the church, advancing the kingdom uh, through their own ministries and through the church. Are there any that stand out in your mind that have just embedded in your heart? Absolutely. We were speaking with one of the ladies who is a pastor. She's right now in New York, but she spent time, a lot of time overseas. Mm -hmm. And it was really cool because she was talking about immigrants. She has a specific call to immigrants. Well, we think of that, having been in television news for 20 years, I'm like, well, why are they here? Are they legal or illegal? Or, you know, is this a political issue or a moral Christian biblical issue? And she said, God moves people. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't matter why they're here. The yeah. fact is that they are here and they're in your neighborhood and they're in your congregation. What are you doing to reach them for Jesus? Wow. Because I firmly believe just as a follower of Christ that the Lord will always give us a segue but it feels interesting when you're engaging with these people and you're wondering like, okay, how am I supposed to think? Like, help me frame my thinking, Lord. And for her, it was just so simple mm -hmm. and it just resonated with my heart. I mean, the Holy Spirit was on it. Like, it doesn't matter why they're here. It yeah. matters that they're here. There you go. And what are you doing about it? Yeah. So, I mean, so many incredible stories, but that one has stuck with me because I feel a responsibility and an urgency. And I love the idea of, of meeting people where they are, no matter where they are. And we have some great examples of house churches being set up. Uh, we talked to one gentleman who is a missionary to hikers mm -hmm. uh, because that's in his wheelhouse. Yeah. He loves to hike. So they set up on hiking trails at the end of the trail where they know people are going to be coming off and tired and hungry and all of that. And they supply them with food and they at times can share the gospel with yeah. people. It, it's a really great opportunity, but it, it just reinforces the importance of meeting people where they are. That's so good. Why a podcast? You've been in broadcasting for 20 years and sort of this transition. What's the value and the power of a podcast? I think it's the length, first of all. Yeah. Okay. I mean, in a news story, I'm used to telling a story in 90 seconds or less, and mm. hopefully they will be thought provoking, but this is challenging on a different level. I mean, it's not just the lady who works specifically with the immigrant right. community. It's every single person, because once you start drilling down, we can make Christianity um, in a 90 second clip uh, seem so encouraging, yes, but not messy. Yeah. And it's very messy because you're working with people. Mm. You know, ministry is messy. And you see in these stories that we're able to tell the messiness that is attendant right. with the ministry. Yeah. Um, and it's beautiful because, I mean, Jesus is honest with people, yep. <laughs> you know? You and so you see you see that, you get the, the depth of it because it's longer form. Yeah. yeah, we get to have a conversation with people. We get to go yeah. back and forth. And when you're reading an article, like where these originated as articles, it's gotta be fairly concise so people can digest it and you hit on the main points. But as we get to talk with people, we'll 
we'll shift a little bit and say, wait a minute, explain what you meant by that, because I hadn't heard that before. Yeah. And then we're off on a different tangent. And it's, but it's great because like she said, it stretches us as well. And I think from a leadership perspective, we A, want to be able to tell some very missionally fruitful stories that our fellowship can celebrate, but it also gives our fellowship at large an opportunity to see you're tethered to something bigger and something more comprehensive than right. maybe just at your local level. So I want to thank you. Thanks for drawing out stories from our fellowship from here and around the world. And to our viewers, I'm excited to say that today we're going to preview uh, one of the podcasts that'll be coming up and then you'll see them regularly right here at AG News Today. But it's just interesting how, you know, it, it was termed in America, it takes a village. Uh, it really does take a village, as it turns out. Yeah, it's um, so true. And it's going to take a, a village of, of churches, of pastors, like you said, opening your doors um, to allow, you know, other people groups to worship the one true God, the same God, break bread around the same table. Um, what would you say, like practical steps that um, if a pastor hears this and thinks, yeah, I want to do that. If you're worried, will it be messy? Yeah, it will. It will be messy. Um, anytime people from another culture start to come together, it gets messy. But messy is life. <laughs> If you want a really clean, quiet church, have one in a cemetery where there's life, <laughs> there's going to be messiness. And I think that's one of the things, oh, you know, there. And I'll just say we had a service. Um, it was a candlelight service at our church and the lights kept going up and down. It was one of the children from our immigrant church. Things get messy when you start to bring in cultural others. They're not going to do things the way you do, but you can help them in two ways. You can help them because their children are going to be going to public schools and learning English and being enveloped in this culture. Give them a Christian foundation in this culture. You can help them. You can help their families. And, um, and they're going to impact us in ways where we're going to have to stretch and um, it's going to be good for us. I think if you can share your faith with a Muslim, you can share your faith with anyone. So be, being open to those cultural others in our community. I had a woman, because one of the things I do is I teach cultural intelligence and really talking about helping churches um, be effective in their community with cultural others. And so a woman was in the service and she said, you know, I've been asking God to let me move for years and he won't. And we just keep having more people from this one cultural community that I'm so uncomfortable with have been moving in. And God spoke to me today. He's not letting me move because I haven't done my job. And that's that's really the thing is look around your community, see who's there. If you have a culturally different neighbor, take them a plate of cookies, give them a welcome. Because when we welcome them as friends, we're going to be welcoming them to the kingdom of God. That comes together. Mm -hmm.